welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren from Pinkbird Originals and today I'm going to be showing you da, 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 how to embroider left chest logos onto sweaters. I'm going to be showing you two methods of how to do it. The first one being the traditional hooping measuring method and the second being using this really cool piece of kit I bought called a hoop master but there'll be more on that later. If you're new here all of my videos tend to be about running a home embroidery business and also a little bit of printing on the side. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button and I hope you enjoy my channel. So to start with, we're going to be going through all of the things that you will need. The most obvious thing being some form of embroidery machine. Whether it's a single needle domestic machine or a multi-needle industrial machine, my method of embroidering on sweaters will work for you. Next, you're going to need something to decorate, such as a sweater. I'd really recommend before you embroider the design onto your garment as like the final garment that you want to wear, that you practice embroidering that design onto some scrap material first. Sometimes you purchase a design online and it looks fantastic, but it might be too dense to embroider onto clothing. So really check how dense and how heavy the design is and how heavy and thick your material is before embroidering your design onto your material. Then a question I see going around a lot is do you need special needles to embroider onto garments? On certain things like knitwear, it does help to have a ballpoint needle, but for what we're doing today, which is just embroidering a little logo onto a cotton garment, I use these 7511 Grosbecker needles for my embroidery machines. You can also use Schmetz or any other needle, but a standard 7511 needle is fine for this project. So this sweater actually started its life as somebody's order, but unfortunately, because I do really big back designs on the backs of my sweaters as well, when I was stitching it out, this bit got caught underneath the embroidery hoop and the design stitched over the sweater and I, well, I say I, my mother, very lovingly, unpicked the sweater for me and salvaged it. So now it's got a little bit of a raw edge, but considering this is just going to be a garment that I'm going to wear around the house because I hate wasting things, uh, that's fine with me. I quite like the raw edge actually. And if you like this design, you can purchase it on my website, www.pinkbirdoriginals.com. So to embroider onto a sweater, you will need a sweater. I personally like these ones, they're organic and they're by B and C. Then I've got two layers of tearaway stabilizer. I've actually salvaged this from another project because my sun patch is going to be very small on the front. I know that that's enough stabilizer for this project. Whoops, then I have a measuring tape. This is for measuring exactly where I want to place my logo on the garment. And then I've got some washi tape, which is going to be for marking the garment. In my case, it's a cute little raccoon design on the front. I got it off eBay. And then last, I've got a little bit of scrap stabilizer here, but what I really want it for is the straight edge. So you can use a ruler or the edge of a piece of paper or anything. This again is just for lining up where the logo is going to be on the jumper and I'll show you more on that as we go on. So I set aside my tearaway stabiliser and I've spread the garment out on a flat surface. I find it's much easier to hoop up sweaters when they're stretched out like this and everything is flat and even and not creased. Then I get my tape measure and I place it in roughly at the centre point of the jumper and I unroll it down the middle and I start where the crew neck ends. And from experience, I've learned that the logo is generally between 3.5 and 6.5 inches down from the crew neck. Uh, it just depends on how big the garment is. For smaller ladies garments, I'd say it's usually about four inches down. And this is where the four inches is on my tape measure. Then I get my scrap of uh, stabilizer, my straight edge, and you can use anything for this. You can use a, a ruler or that or anything like that. You just need that straight edge. And I drag that underneath the tape measure where the four inches is across the garment. Then I pick up my tape measure 
and from the inside of the crew neck cuff, from the top seam, I measured downward and then where the two points intersect, where the measuring tape comes down and where the flat edge comes across, that is where I put my little raccoon washi tape because I know that this is where my logo is going to be. You don't have to use washi tape. You can use anything to make a mark on your jumper. Um, you use tailor chalk and things like that. I just like the raccoon because it's cute. And then you take your tools off your jumper. You bring your tear away stabilizer back. And at this point, you would place your tear away inside the jumper like so. Make sure it's lying nice and flat inside. Then you'd get your embroidery hoop and you'd place the lower ring of the embroidery hoop inside the jumper, underneath the two layers of tearaway stabilizer and roughly try to get that center as best you can. You have to move it around a little bit inside. Then you'd place your ring on top and press down. Maybe bring it up a little bit higher. And then press down with the raccoon being in the center. But this video isn't just about traditional hooping methods. This video is about saving you time and spending your money. This contraption is the best thing I've ever bought. It's called the Hoopmaster. Um, it's an embroidery business's best friend. It is great for hooping up garments quickly and evenly every time. The board is marked out with all of these little uh, numbers and these little holes where you place this mount onto and you can line up exactly where you want your garment to be. So for instance, we're going to be embroidering on a lady's medium sweater and it did take a, a little bit of trial and error to get it right. But I know that this particular sweater, you embroider it on number nine. So I take the back of my hoop, I place it in the mount, then I open up the little flaps like so. I get my tearaway stabiliser, sometimes you have to cut it to shape and I place it inside and I close the little limbs. Then I grab my jumper and you can see the little raccoon sticker is still on it just for reference. And you pull and you pull the jumper over the, the board. Make sure the shoulder seams are lined up at the top that they sit neatly on the top of the board. I line the neckline up with the little markings at the top here. In this case, I line it up with letter D. Make sure it's straight when I'm facing it head on. Then I get my embroidery hoop. Uh, unfortunately, these mounts are made specifically for each hoop. So if you say you lose a, a lot of your 18 hoop or your 15 hoop, or if you're using a, a brother device as well, you got a 10 hoop, you do have to buy one of these mounts for each hoop size, which is why I went for the largest hoop size, which is the 18 centimeter hoop on the Happy Machines, because I knew I could embroider most of my designs inside it. Then you just place it on like so, press down, and it's really easy. And as you can see, the little raccoon is right in the center and your garment is ready to embroider. So we're at the embroidery machine now and as you can see I've got it all set up for my sun design to go on the front of my jumper. I'm going to use this gold colour here on needle number 12 and right in the back corner there I have the black. So then I just bring my jumper from the Hoopmaster over to the embroidery machine. I place it on there like so. The design is going to be embroidered upside down because the, of the way I've hooped the jumper. I check inside to make sure there's no fabric hanging down or nothing at risk of being embroidered on top of. Then I make sure that my embroidery design 
matches up with my washi tape by moving it on the embroidery machine so that it's in the center of the hoop. Take my little raccoon away and then I'm ready to go. There you have it, a finished logo on your sweater. I actually have a little bit of a confession to make. Um, I did this sweater last night and I set the camera up to film it stitching out, but I forgot to hit record and the whole thing stitched out and it didn't film anything. I hope you can forgive me, but as you can see, it worked out just fine. It's in the right place. If I turn around is what the back of the design looks like. So this is one of my favorite designs I make. And if you'd like to purchase it for yourself, it is available on my website, www.paintbirdoriginals.com. Comes in all different sizes and is also available in black. And that one looks really cool as well because the gold stands out very well against the black. I hope I've shown you how easy and fun it is to embroider onto sweaters. As long as you remember all of the steps, you'll be absolutely fine. And remember to check to make sure that the garment isn't caught around the hoop. That's the most important thing. If you're starting out in an embroidery business, I really recommend you purchase the Hoopmaster just because it saves you so much time and all of your garments are perfect 90% of the time. It's very rare I have any errors when I'm using the Hoopmaster. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'm also on Instagram. So if you check out Pinkbird Originals, you can find all of my other projects and artwork there. Bye bye.